Hello, my name is Adam, and we're here for today's video on the Loco Force channel. Uh, what we're going to discuss today is the top 10 things that I regret about my layout down here, and uh, things you should probably avoid uh, if you're just starting building a model railroad. Um, I did a previous video on this, and it did pretty well, as you can see. Um, so yeah, I'm going to talk about a few things today. And I hope you enjoy the video. If you enjoy it, please consider subscribing. Um, I'd like to get the channel to a thousand subs at some point. You know, I, we've, we're, we're getting close to 600. It's been bouncing up and down for the last couple of weeks, but I'm back properly. I'm going to try making some more slightly higher quality content. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll get some new followers coming in. I'm going to experiment with some new things, um, potentially some other non-train stuff, but you know, we'll see, we'll see. But anyway, hope you enjoy the video and uh, yeah, let's get started. Hi, editing, Adam here. I uh, just want to apologise about my hair. just got out of the shower, so that's why it looks like a complete bloody mess. But uh, yeah, hope you enjoy. Okay, so the first thing I would say I sort of regret is using this track bed now as you can see it isn't raised up at all so if i was doing this again obviously i would use cork i'd put down cork road bed and then just use normal ballast on top um at the time you thought this was a good idea and don't get me wrong it does look all right but i would prefer it if you know the track was a little bit higher it makes it a little bit more prototypical um but yes yeah, so i think this is it's jarvis i think it's called um so it just came in a roll you cut it up and uh yeah you just sort of glue it down but if i was to do it again i'd definitely put some cork underneath it or just not use this stuff at all now the next thing i sort of regret is having the power uh so obvious um there's this big old hole here uh, and then there's this big lump. So if I was doing it again, I think I would um, solder it. Now, obviously, if you're a beginner, then that's probably not the best idea. But um, you could at least, you know, put it over there or something and hide it behind something. I feel like because it's right here in the middle of everything, it just makes it so obvious and it just doesn't look very good. So I think if I was to do this again, I'd either solder it uh, straight to the track or just hide it around the back of the layout somewhere over there. Okay, so next thing is, I regret being so indecisive. So what you need to avoid, uh, or I, I think is a good idea, is to avoid wanting to do too many things. You need to sort of narrow down what you want to do and then uh, get the trains related to that. So as you can see, I've got a complete mix of stuff. Now, don't get me wrong, I, I like them all. I do like my trains. But at the same time, if I had focused on a certain era and that sort of thing, then I would have a fleet of trains that would all work together, they'd all run together. And I think that is something that I'd prefer. So as you can see, we've got a weird mix of stuff here. So this is a BR era, this is freelance, uh, that's like early privatization, and then this is a fairly modern one, although I think it might have been repainted by now. Um, but yeah, so none of these things would really run together. Um, now don't get me wrong, I was working with what I had at the time, but I struggle to focus on a certain thing. I think I started off thinking, oh, we'll set it in this period. And then, you know, a couple of months later, I was like, oh, actually, we'll set it in this period. And that sort of messed things around a bit. And I've got some items of stock that I sort of regret having. And I could have had something more suitable instead. Um, but yeah, so it's that's sort of a personal one. Obviously, some people, you know, they'll run specific eras and specific trains, and then other people just run whatever the hell they want. And there's no, I haven't got a problem with either of them. Um, but if you want to get the most out of your money, then I would say that you need to try and focus on a certain time period, certain era, and the type of trains you want to run. Then you can get like a sort of uniform fleet of uh, trains that would all run together. But yeah, like I said, that's sort of a uh, personal one more than anything. But uh, it's still something I think you should consider.
Okay, so the fourth thing I regret is sticking with set track points. So for those of you that don't know, I actually sort of abandoned this project um, a couple years ago, and it's only in the lockdown last year that I brought it back. Now, what I regret is not swapping my points over to something that's, you know, more efficient, I guess. The problem with these points is all of my, well, basically all of my engines and rolling stock, they will derail. If I want to use this crossover, I just can't because the trains just fall and topple off. Um, so yeah, I think if I was to do it again, I would definitely swap out my points for some more suitable ones. But then of course, with a layout of this size, you are limited by space. So if I did add bigger points, then I think I'd lose a couple sidings. So I don't know. Um, but it, they, they, they're good enough for when you're starting out, I guess. But I think when you move on a bit, you should probably swap them out for points that are less likely to derail. Because it is incredibly frustrating um, if you want to run a train across and it just sort of explodes and derails. Um, but yeah, I'm not bashing Hornby and their points or anything. In fairness, mine are fairly old. Um, but I guess... You could still use them, but just don't get big engines, which sort of brings us on to our next point. All right, so thing number five is don't get trains that are too big for your layout. If you've got a small shunting layout, just get small 060 and 040 shunting engines. Now, this might seem like an obvious thing, but me being the idiot I am, and given that I like American trains, I decided to get this massive um, SD70 M-2. Uh, it's, it's, it's huge. Um, it's far too big for my layout. And another issue is it's got a plow on the front here. And every time it goes round, it knocks the DCC connectors, which you can see just there. And it clips them. And I, risk, I feel like that risks damaging it. Um, so... Something I would avoid is getting trains that are far too big. It does look out of place when it's running round, um, given that, you know, again, it's only like a four by six foot layout or something like that. Um, so you can't really run a realistic looking train. But again, like I said, personal preference. If you want to run what you want, then you can. You know, that's up to you. But personally, I think if I did it again, um, I wouldn't get a loco of this size. Hi, congratulations, you made it halfway through the video. And if you've enjoyed what you've seen so far, please consider subscribing and dropping a like. It's exact, it's totally free to do, and it would help my channel grow a lot. I want to hit a thousand subscribers by the end of the year. So let's see if we can make that happen. Thanks for watching, and uh, let's continue with the video. Okay, so another thing I would recommend doing is getting a decent storage system. What I'm using here is an old chest of drawers. Yes, it is quite good. It's got somewhere to put it, but it's not quite wide enough for boxes um, to sort of... This is, no, this is a bad example because these ones fit, but um, I actually struggle fitting all my boxes in here. Um, and it's also falling apart. So make sure you get a good bit of storage system um, because sometimes these the amount of stuff I have, just it, it just doesn't really fit properly. Um... So it's something I'd recommend. It's also good for sort of dividing up the different eras. So I think in here we've got some modern image stuff. This drawer here is my uh, Welsh Railway stuff. And then this down the bottom is some Locos. So yeah, I'd highly recommend getting a nice sort of storage system. Maybe use those big uh, cabinets which have the drawers in. Uh, they're made of plastic. They're like 20 quid from Argos or something. Um, but yeah, definitely something a bit better than this. I mean, this one just got beer and another layout stuck on top of it. And it's not very efficient, and I end up having to keep boxes down there anyway. The other alternative is, of course, putting stuff underneath the layout, but that is filled with other garage-type stuff. And back on the point of selling things, uh, another major thing I regret is selling all my trains now i did this in february of 2019 sorry 2020 and i was like oh i'm running out of money i've got to sell all my trains and then a month i hadn't been into trains for a while at that point um and i was sort of getting a bit desperate because i briefly got a job and it didn't work out and i was like right i need some money so what i thought was since i'm not into these anymore i'm gonna sell all my trains i sold them all to hattons for 150 quid 
No one must have spent like 500 quid on those logos. I think Hatton's bloody ripped me off, to be honest. But I was so desperate for money, I didn't care about it. And guess what I did with the money I got from Hatton's? I bought one train. So I turned six engines and a load of wagons into one train because I'm an idiot. So, you know, if you're sort of getting bored with your trains, don't sell them. Um, or at least think about it more before you do. Because otherwise you'll make the mistake I did and sell a load of stuff that I would love to still have. Used to have a Load Hall 56, one of my favourite engines, love that. Had a couple of American engines, love them as well. And I had two rakes of these American container wagons. And I paid 35 quid each for these. Now I'm seeing them on eBay for like 50 quid per wagon. Um, so, you know, Hattons are making a big profit off me. And I don't like that. Uh, so yeah, you've got to make sure to um, think carefully before just selling your entire collection. And you might think, again, that's quite obvious, but uh, if you're my age and you're thinking, oh, you know, I don't like trains anymore, just keep them just in case, because you might get back to it later in life or sooner than you think, like I did. Um, so, yeah. That's right, we're looking at this engine again. So another thing I would regret, or sorry, I do regret, is sort of just buying Locos for the hell of it. Um, we can also use this one to illustrate that. So, like I was saying before, I was being a bit indecisive. And the reason this is a different point is you need to make sure you actually want these trains, you know, ponder it for a couple of weeks. I guess in some cases it might sell out, so you might have to get it. But you might regret it if you're just getting it for no reason. I got this because it was on a bargain. Does it fit with my layout? No. I can make an excuse on the freelance, but it doesn't work really. You know, I'd rather have got a few modern image wagons than this. For that reason, I might end up selling this. And it's the same with this. I wasn't actually that interested in the era. I didn't really think about it much. And I've sort of just got another engine that I don't really want that much. And again, it might get sold. Okay, so the next thing we're going to talk about is rushing things. Do not do it. You've got to take your time. You've got to consider these things, look up a couple tutorials. Um, there's a couple things I've rushed on this layout. I am overall pretty happy with it, if I'm honest. But there are a couple things um, that I feel like I, I did rush. Um, one of the main ones is this car park here. Uh, there's a Matilda tank park there because, you know, I have no cars. But as you can see, it's very shoddily done. I just got a ruler and some pens and drew it all. From a distance, I think it looks all right. I probably overdid it on the double yellows. I don't know if you do have red lines for buses. Um, but again, it's my layout. I can, I can do what I want, in fairness. Um, but yeah, no. Uh, I think this is one of the things I did rush. And I potentially could have put something else in the middle if I'd thought about it a bit more. Um, and, you know, I rushed that area as well. I need to get some fences and stuff. But uh, to be honest, I don't think I'm going to finish this. Uh, I don't really have any reason to. Um, and the other thing I rushed, I think, was this wall. Um, I think I stuck the graffiti on a bit too hastily. And I think it looks pretty crap compared to here. Now, this, this is like the favourite part of my layout. I've got graffiti stickers. I've got graffiti directly on the wall. And I think that's a lot more effective than what I've done here, which is just stickers. So I think I will redo this at some point. Um, that might be one of the things I actually do get around to doing. But uh, yeah, I would definitely avoid rushing things on your layout. You know, you've got your whole life to do it. There's no reason to rush it like I have. And I, I would also say this down here is quite rushed as well. I thought it looked all right at the time, but think about it now. It's again, something I wouldn't mind redoing potentially. And now for the final thing that you should just not do on your modern railway is abandon it. Just don't, you know. If things aren't going the way you want to, just take a little bit of a break and then come back to it. Then you can decide if you want to abandon it or not. In it or not. Now I abandoned this layout for a whole year. We had some nice back scenes on the back here. And once it was abandoned, uh, this, everything came off the board. It was lent up here. And this led to damage to the track, which is reasons why I still have problems today. 
and the back scenes were completely ruined uh, because they were stored in a loft and there was some sort of condensation problem and because they were printed they all went blue and yeah horrible so i'd say just don't abandon it um you know you've got to persevere keep going through and if it really really isn't going your way that's when you can consider just you know having a, a long break and coming back with a fresh mind uh, fresh layout new ideas because at the end of the day you don't want to force yourself to do something you don't actually enjoy doing um so yeah like i said just don't do it it's a big regret of mine giving up on this um i think if i continued with it it would probably be a lot nicer don't get me wrong i do still love it and these hills that these have always been here but the damage that was caused uh to some of my favorite bits of the layout is it's irreplaceable and it is kind of annoying so it's something i'd you know just try not to do it and speaking of abandoning projects this is my other layout it's well it's a diorama really i don't think it'll actually run um this was literally just made with whatever the hell i had left in my scenery box and i've now run out and i'll be honest i've abandoned it so maybe soon i will come back to this and finish it it's just buying a signal box and platforms and some other bits and bobs it really wouldn't be that much effort um but funds at the moment are a little bit tight although saying that i am still getting some new stuff but we'll see that in a future video um but yeah so that's basically everything so uh let's wrap things up right, so that was it um that was 10 things you shouldn't do or things that i regret i don't know i'm gonna title this video It'll probably something clickbaity and stupid if you've made it this far then i really do appreciate and consider subscribing because i'm gonna bring some more videos out um school's over for me now and until i get a job i've got a lot of time on my hands so there's quite a few things in the pipeline so watch out for that and yeah if you've enjoyed what you've seen here today um share it around um let a friend know i don't know uh, and like I said, I want to get to uh, a thousand subscribers at some point, hopefully at the end of this year, I don't know. Obviously there's a lot of other YouTubers doing much more interesting things than me. Um, but like I said, there's videos in the pipeline. Um, so yeah, just keep an eye out basically. So yeah, thanks for watching, remember to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.